And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host today. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program. In this program, we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking and grow your business. We always start this show with a quote. And today's quote is, no nation was ever ruined by trade. And that is from Benjamin Franklin. For the trade to occur, we need people to create a space, space or field for us to do it. And with us today, we have the privilege to have in the studio someone who does just that, creating a space for businesses to do well. And her name is Bridget Bean from the SBA. Hello, Bridget. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Very good. I'm glad to have you as one of our guests. I'm thrilled to be here. OK, good. Now, I know there is not a lot of people know about the SBA. So I would love for you to please just first introduce yourself as to who you are and tell us exactly what the, uh, the SBA is. Great. Um, I'm Bridget Bean, mm -hmm. and I'm the District Director for the Greater Washington Metropolitan Area District okay. Office of the United States Small Business Administration. Okay. And the SBA, uh, we've been around for, since 1953, mm -hmm. and the mission has been the same, and that is to help grow small businesses, okay. because we know small businesses is the backbone of the economy, so Absolutely. if we can create an ecosystem of support for mm -hmm. small businesses, then our nation and our economy will be stronger, more robust, and we can really build um, an economy that, that's built to last. Okay. Can you tell them what SBA means? It stands for the Small Business Administration. So okay. we exist to help small businesses from the very uh, smallest of the small, single mm -hmm. entrepreneurs running their own business to rather large small businesses, um, and then many of them graduate and become large businesses. So we fill that, that, that niche mm -hmm. for small businesses um, in, in the U.S. Okay. Before we go through the detail in the SBA, I have a question for you. The one I tell you that I won't tell you before the show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what is your biggest challenge? Um, what has been your biggest challenge? Yes. I, the biggest challenge is getting the word out mm -hmm. that there are so many resources to help small businesses and to help um, would-be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. before they start their business to mm -hmm. get information that could help them uh, be more successful, to be more successful sooner, mm -hmm. uh, to avoid pitfalls, is to get the word out about the resources that are out there mm -hmm. um, that we have and, and our many partnerships around the area. So it's really an educational uh, issue that I face in getting mm -hmm. the word out. Because um, mm -hmm. I think people want to avail themselves of the resources, mm -hmm. they just don't know that they're out there. All right, very good. Now my question to you is, why don't you tell us what area you are over and cover? Of course. SBA, of course, is a federal agency and we're nationwide, but my specific territory is the greater Washington metropolitan area. Okay. And it, that includes uh, Montgomery County, mm -hmm. Prince George's County, Fairfax County, Arlington, Alexandria, and Loudoun County. Okay, very good. But you cover also some of the states around here. I do. For I'm their also, information. I'm also regional administrator for the Mid Atlantic Territory, so okay. I have uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, West Virginia, all of Maryland, all of DC, and all of Virginia. Very good. So guys, when you see district down there, it's bigger than Washington, D.C.? Absolutely. Okay, good. Excellent. All right. Now, go ahead. You want to tell us what you can offer and uh, what the SBA offer? We have three main business lines to help small businesses. And mm -hmm. the first is counseling and training. Okay. Uh, it's so important for entrepreneurs to get counseling and training in various aspects of their business. And as you go along the entrepreneurial journey, mm -hmm those needs change so Absolutely. we try to be there every step of the way with mm -hmm. counseling and training mm -hmm. the second area is um, access to government contracting and, it, and in this area of the region mm -hmm. being the seat of the federal government mm -hmm. there's a lot of government contracting activity going on mm -hmm. and small businesses play a very important role in providing the products and services that the government buys okay. so we help small businesses know how to market mm -hmm. to federal agencies who's buying what they sell mm -hmm. and then to create opportunities where we can do some matchmaking so they can meet mm -hmm. the buyers in the various agencies. Okay. And the third business line is access to capital. We know that cash, that money, is the oxygen for small businesses. And yeah. so what we do is we work with lenders 
to help um, make that capital available to small business. And, and we do that through a variety of programs where we guarantee loans and encourage uh, lenders to lend money to small businesses. Got it. Okay, very good, excellent. Uh, I do, uh, I did have an experience, I have experience regularly with SBA and I'm very happy with them. And I'm very impressed, maybe SCORE mm -hmm. as a section where you can go, I strongly suggest that if you ever want to start a business or uh, you are in business, you can definitely use SCORE. They have various counselors there who know, have experience in that specific field and will guide you. I definitely appreciate what they can do. Can you tell us a bit more about it? Well, counseling and training is, is very, um, very broad. Mm -hmm. And every small business has unique needs. Mm -hmm. And SBA, as an agency, we have limited resources. So we fund what we call our partners to help us do counseling and training in mm -hmm. a variety of areas. So we have SCORE, which are, as you mentioned, um, individuals who have run their own businesses. Uh -huh. So they've walked the walk. Mm -hmm. They understand what it takes. They've made those mistakes. They understand the industry so they can give um, real practical advice. So SCORE is one of the um, resource partners that helps us do counseling and training. Mm -hmm. The next one is small business development centers mm -hmm. and in Virginia they're run out of George Mason University, right. in Maryland out of the University of Maryland. And again, these are counselors who are very knowledgeable in, in unique areas. Maybe it's IT, maybe it's in HR practices or bookkeeping or growing your business. And so th the counselors from the Small Business Development Center also work one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with, with, with businesses in the area. Mm -hmm. And we have our Women's Business Center um, right in Springfield that works with not exclusively women, mm -hmm. but predominantly women mm -hmm. because we know that women entrepreneurs often have some unique challenges. Mm -hmm. And so the Women's Business Center really caters to, to women who often wear more than one hat, mm -hmm. mother, you know, um, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a different environment for women to get the resources that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done a, a big effort to try and put some training online because mm -hmm. we know entrepreneurs are very busy. Mm, true. The, 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 there are no hours for entrepreneurs, <laughs> right? It's 24 7 all the time. 365. 365, absolutely. <laughs> and more if they could get it in. So, what we've done is we've provided a lot of training online mm -hmm. so that the entrepreneur can access it when they have time. It could be 2 o'clock in the morning, it could be you know, 9 o'clock at night or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a variety of training online to help a small business from, should I go into business? Am I ready to go into business? Mm -hmm. What kind of funding do I need to, to launch my business? To how do I do government contracting? Um, to how do I um, become DCAA compliant with mm -hmm. my books? Mm -hmm. So we try and provide um, an ecosystem of support to help small businesses grow. Mm -hmm. And counseling and training is a really, really important component because studies have shown that small businesses that receive five or more hours of, of counseling stay in business longer, hmm. have higher revenues, hire more people, and retain more employees. So we know, studies have shown that small businesses that avail themselves of this counseling and training mm -hmm. do better. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we provide it in as many ways, uh, in formats, media, and times, mm -hmm. so that small businesses can take advantage of it. Okay. So it's, that's the first business line is um, counseling and training, and, okay. and we use our resource partners to help with that. Okay. The next area, of course, is government contracting, and it's big business, big business. The government is the largest buyer mm -hmm. of goods and services, mm -hmm. and there is a goal of 23% of all of that to go to small businesses. Okay. So at the federal level, it's recognized um, that small businesses actually have the innovation mm -hmm. that the government needs. And so they've put a goal to have 23% of all federal procurements go to small businesses. And this is good. It just helps focus federal agencies on reminding them of the important role that small businesses play. Mm -hmm. And um, when you think about it, the federal government buys about um, half a trillion dollars worth of goods. They buy anything and everything, but people do not know that. They buy everything, mm -hmm. from paint to cleaning services mm -hmm. to nanotechnology to um, 
clothing, mm -hmm. apparel, mm -hmm. um, everything. You name it, they buy it. Mm -hmm. You just have to figure out how to get your product or service into the agency that's going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So we work very closely with the agencies to educate them mm -hmm. on why it's important to utilize small businesses and to have a pipeline of small businesses that are ready and able to perform on government contracts. So we, we view ourselves as kind of relationship managers, matchmaking. But when you get a contract, we want to make sure that you can perform so, because there's sense. nothing worse than not. So training that's where, again, people. the counseling and training comes back to support. So these three business lines really are mm -hmm. very much um, intertwined. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in there's subcategories, not just small businesses, but we've got service disabled, veteran owned small businesses, women owned small businesses, hub zones. So it's very important that um, underserved uh, sectors of our society mm -hmm get create a level playing field for mm -hmm. them to compete for these government contracts Got it. so we 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 think it's um solid good business plan to have goals for these subcategories and for us in this area the greater washington metropolitan area mm -hmm. we have the highest percentage of women-owned small businesses anywhere in the country oh, really? so mm -hmm. if we can really get um, federal agencies to meet their goals economically as a region we stand to benefit because we have such a high percentage of women-owned small businesses in the area. Um, and I think as we move forward, even though there's a big talk of reduced um, budget, budget mm -hmm. I think that's an opportunity for small businesses. How so? I think for two reasons. One, the government's going to become a more discerning consumer. Mm -hmm. Heretofore, if we you know, put a million dollars out there to a company. Mm. You know, if we got what if we got what we needed, fine. If we didn't, well, we'll just oh, put another million out there. Mm. We're, the federal government is becoming a much more discerning consumer. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be much more um, active mm. in looking at the deliverables. Did we get it? Did we get it on time with incentives mm. to come in on time under budget? Mm. And this is where small businesses are nimble enough to be responsive. Gotcha. So I actually think that a reduction, the reduction in the federal government benefits. will help small businesses. So I'm really excited to see mm -hmm. um, what 2013 will bring for small businesses in the federal contracting arena. Okay. So that's, that's the second business line. Mm -hmm. And the third business line is, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. access to capital. Mm -hmm. You know, cash is king, money is, is, every business needs it. From mobilization to growth to um, invest in inventory. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we don't do direct lending. But what we do is we guarantee loans made okay. by our lending partners. Got it. And what that does is allows the lender a little bit more of a comfort level. Mm. Sometimes uh, investing in a small business could be considered a bit more risky mm -hmm. than traditional banks like to mm -hmm. uh, invest in. So by giving them a 75% or an 85% guarantee, mm -hmm. the risk to the, fed to the lender mm -hmm. is minimized. Gotcha. So, and, and I think most lenders want to lend to small businesses. They want to invest in their community. Mm -hmm. This just gives them a little bit more of a, of a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a variety of programs. It's not just one loan program, mm -hmm. because we know entrepreneurs okay. are very different. Mm -hmm. And you might need 5,000, 15,000, 25,000, mm -hmm. 5 million. So we have loan programs that can help meet all of those needs from the very small, the micro business, mm -hmm. to the very large who's going to uh, work on a government contract and they need mobilization money. Um, so we're, we, we're doing a lot of things to be very responsive to the, to the needs mm -hmm. in, in addition to using our traditional programs. We're looking at what are, what are the challenges small businesses are facing. And in our area, government contracting is big business for them, but if they don't have the money to do it, then they can't really participate. Mm -hmm. So we've changed some of our programs so that um, lenders can now use government contracts as receivables, as opposed to traditional oh, collateral. Oh, I see. So if you're um, going to get a, a government contract, mm -hmm. you can go to the banker and you can say, listen, I've got this contract, mm -hmm. and then you can use that as your collateral, so to speak, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to find inventory or your house or whatever it might be, the government contract is the collateral. And this is really revolutionizing lending in this area. Mm -hmm. um, the program was rolled out October 1st of last year. Mm -hmm. And in, what is that, six months, eight months, mm -hmm. we have um, done about 250 loans wow. to the tune of about $57 uh, million dollars in two sectors, which I think is really important. It's manufacturing mm. 
and construction. So what that says to me is, um, and there are two strong indicators for a recovering economy, first Absolutely. of all, mm -hmm. uh, but it also shows those are long-term jobs. The, the manufacturing are long-term, mm -hmm. often um, high-tech, high-paying jobs that we're bringing manufacturing back to the country. So now we have a loan product that will allow manufacturing to become a part of main, mainstay America. Mm -hmm. And construction, as you know, in this area, you can't go anywhere without seeing yeah, construction, absolutely. right? Yes, yes, so yes, to yes. make sure that small businesses get an opportunity to participate in the construction um, is really important. And, and our new loan program, which we call the CAP Line, mm -hmm. is one of those. Um, tools that can help them participate. So it's those three business lines, which is okay. counseling and training, access to government contracting, and access to capital, mm -hmm. which are really are the focus of what we try and do. And we do that in partnership with resource partners, with lending partners, with chambers of commerce, with uh, the community college, mm -hmm. with George Mason, with the University of Maryland. So we're always looking to partner to make sure that we um, flesh out that ecosystem of support mm -hmm. so that no matter what it is you need, mm -hmm. we've got connections to help you get the resources you need to grow your business. Good job. Very good. That's excellent. That's very good. Now I have another question for you. What is your biggest success? What would you consider your biggest success? The biggest, my personal yeah. biggest success? Yeah, yes. Well, I'll tell you, this is, um, I was shopping at the Price Club. Mm -hmm. I, I think we call it Costco these days, but I was shopping at Price Club and I was there with my daughter and um, going down an aisle and somebody, I heard someone say, um, Bridget, and I turned around and uh, I saw a woman and a man and they were walking towards me mm -hmm. and they looked familiar but I just didn't really, mm -hmm. it couldn't place the face. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, we just wanted to tell you um, to thank you for meeting with us. And it was coming back to me that I had met with them and mm -hmm. gave them some counseling and training. Mm -hmm. And they had just told me that they just got awarded their first $2 million contract. Oh, really? And it just was really, um, it's nice to see the fruits of your labor uh -huh, sure. come That's to right. fruition. Uh -huh. um, so seeing that, um, the success, mm -hmm. you know, being, being some small part mm -hmm. of a small business's success mm -hmm. and allowing them to really um, achieve the American dream, mm -hmm. whatever that might be for them, mm -hmm. to, to play that role, that support role, mm -hmm. and to create an ecosystem for small businesses. For me, that's, those are the kinds of things that I think are um, my biggest successes, when, when you can see someone who had a dream mm -hmm. and you were able to support them in it mm -hmm. and then for the, to hear mm -hmm. of their success. I mean, that's really, that's, that's good stuff. <laughs> that's really good stuff. That's great, that's excellent. So, and then the question I have for you next is, what do you see happening in the future? What, what do you see? What, we, what do you see happening based on what all are you doing? Well, I, I have to tell you, this is a very exciting time to be mm -hmm. a small business. There has never been a better time or a better place to be a small business than right now mm -hmm. in the greater Washington metropolitan area. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is the federal government is here, mm -hmm. and they're going to continue to buy. They Absolutely. may shift mm -hmm. what they buy. Mm -hmm. They may shift who buys what, mm -hmm. but it's still an incredibly no robust mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is we have great diversity in the greater Washington metropolitan area. Look at, I mean, we've got biosciences, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the intelligence community. Mm -hmm. We've got um, the, the highest educated population anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. So we've got great hospitals. We've got great institutions of higher learning. We've got um, consumers who like to go out to eat, mm -hmm. who, so everything that you could possibly do in a small business from nanotechnology to biotechnology to intelligence services to nanotechnology to restaurants, from Main Street mm -hmm. to high tech, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity to be successful right here. Got it. So for me, I think it's really exciting. Um, and we're seeing people like to buy local. Mm -hmm. People like to buy from small businesses. And mm -hmm. so we've got all these elements contributing to a very healthy mm -hmm. um, um, economy for small businesses and the resources that are out there and the prominence that small businesses hold because people recognize mm -hmm. that two out of every three net new jobs comes from a small business. When we get on hard times, small businesses are the last to let employees go. They will do anything to keep them employed. Mm -hmm. So it's, we're, in an, we're in a region mm -hmm. where we have absolutely all of the right ingredients mm -hmm. 
to make a very healthy um, environment for small businesses to grow. So from the counseling and training, to the government contracting, to the loan programs, um, and we are back to pre-recessionary lending. I mean, we are having a banner year lending in the greater Washington metropolitan area, and lending is up to women, mm -hmm. to veterans. Mm -hmm. We're working very hard to make sure that our minority um, lending is, is on the rise and continues to rise. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of these ingredients that are creating, I think, a great recipe for mm -hmm. successful entrepreneurs. And the greater Washington metropolitan area is absolutely the best place to start and grow business. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I'm glad I'm healed. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you had an advice that you would like to give to a small business, what would be that advice? I would have two. If you haven't started a business yet, mm -hmm. Talk to a score counselor. Talk right. to somebody at the SBDC. Mm -hmm. Share your vision and your ideas mm -hmm. with somebody who can give you honest mm -hmm. feedback, mm -hmm. who can say, well, have you thought about this? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? What market research have you done? Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to get that honest feedback mm -hmm. before you begin. And my advice to if you're in business is exactly the same. As you grow your business, mm -hmm. continue to find people and resources who will help you grow your business. We know that, um, businesses that avail themselves are more successful. Just because you've been in, ten, in business for 10 years doesn't mm -hmm. mean you don't need that kind of assistance. It's just a different kind of mm -hmm. assistance. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is really have different levels of counseling and training for various size of business. Mm -hmm. So my, my advice is always seek out resources. Ask, ask for help and you would be amazed at what's out there at low cost or no cost mm -hmm. to the American taxpayer. Um, and so avail yourself of that and okay. to continue to learn what's out there, what's new, mm -hmm. so that you can be nimble and flexible mm -hmm. um, as a small business owner to respond to the changes, right, in, yeah. our, in our community, in our economy. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, it is the small businesses that can be that nimble, mm -hmm. but the ones who get assistance and, and are continuing to learning and growing are the ones who absolutely can adapt better, faster, and be more successful. Very good. All right. Now, another question, what I would like to know, how did you get to do what you do? How did I get to do? Right. How did I get to be where I am? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, life is a very funny thing. Uh -huh. Life is a very funny thing. I was, I got the job at the Small Business Administration. I started out working for the Chief Counsel for Advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, which is an amazing office that that advocates on behalf of small businesses all the time in all areas. But it was going to be a one-year gig. Mm -hmm. It was putting my husband through his master's program mm -hmm. in architecture, and then life happened. Mm -hmm. I had a baby, mm -hmm. and thought, well, I'll stay for the health insurance. And then the most wonderful things just happened. I worked for wonderful people who gave me great opportunities, so I spent 20 years in headquarters learning policy and procedures. Mm -hmm. And then in 2009, this job came open. And I thought, this is where I live. I was born and raised in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. What a great opportunity to take my knowledge mm -hmm. and my experience from headquarters and apply it at the ground level, mm -hmm. working with small businesses one-on-one -on -one in my community. Mm -hmm. So for me, when this job opened up mm -hmm. and, and um, I was appointed to this position, mm -hmm. it was such a miracle to be able to take what I had grown to love mm -hmm over 18 years working in headquarters, which I thought was going to be a one-year job, <laughs> has become my career, my passion. Gotcha. And then to be able to take it and work with small businesses in my community, where I shop. Mm -hmm. You know, the parents of my children's friends are, are small business owners. Mm -hmm. And to be able to help them grow and to grow my economy mm -hmm. and to allow my community to grow and be better for, for everybody but for my children. And, and it's just, it's an amazing opportunity to be part of uh, creating something that's bigger than all of us, and that mm -hmm. is a healthy community for, for all of us. So that's how I came to this job, and it's mm -hmm. just been a, an incredible blessing, mm -hmm. and um, I meet amazing people. I meet creative risk takers every day mm -hmm. who put it on the line, mm -hmm. who wow. start their business, who mm -hmm. will do it because they have a passion, because mm -hmm. this is what they want to do, um, and they're really making a difference in their community, whether they're um, designing the next uh, infrared light that's being used in non-invasive surgery but doesn't, but doesn't um, emit heat, mm -hmm. which is really an incredible thing, mm -hmm. or if they're opening a new restaurant, which will provide an opportunity to hire new people, and, I mean, and a, and a gathering place. So, and it's fun as you drive down the streets of Northern Virginia, 
and you say, oh, that's a small business that I help. That's one of my, you know, it's, it's a very maternalistic, you know, it's like a proud parent. That's one of mine, that's one of mine, that's one of mine. So it's really nice to see that, um, you know, the sometimes result. the federal government doesn't always get the recognition I that it's due, but yeah, the yeah. Small Business Administration has a great mission. And my colleagues that I get to work with are great, mm -hmm. but the small businesses that I meet every day are an inspiration mm -hmm. and remind us what this country is founded on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, who did you quote earlier today? Benjamin Franklin. Absolutely. One of our <laughs> finest entrepreneurs. One of our finest entrepreneurs. That's good. Thomas Jefferson. Uh -huh. I mean, this country was built um, uh, on, on the passion of entrepreneurs. Absolutely. And we're seeing it as alive and vibrant today as mm -hmm. it was then. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, it's just a great. Don't tell anybody, but it is the best job in federal government. <laughs> I don't want to tell anybody that because they don't want to take it. But very rarely do you get to be inspired every day by people who are doing amazing, creative, risk-taking um, actions every day. And, and the, the fun thing is to see the two fastest growing segments of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. the over 50 mm -hmm. and the young entrepreneur. Okay. So we're seeing all kinds of people go into entrepreneurship. Um, you know, people who are retired but not ready to retire. Gotcha. Starting it. And young people are taking it as a way of life. You have it all. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. You're very welcome.